Hello everyone, Norma Woodcock speaking to you from Perth in Western Australia and I'd like to speak into the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time Year B and the theme, Small Beginnings. In the Gospel in, in Mark 4, 26-34, there are two parables about the steady growth of the Kingdom of God. From insignificant beginnings, growth is brought about by God. I want to share about a dye experiment. If you get a large vessel of clear water and a little phial of dye and drop by drop the dye is dropped into the clear water, at first it seems to have no effect at all. The water doesn't seem to be coloured in the least. Then quite suddenly the water begins to tinge with the colour. Bit by bit the colour deepens until the whole vessel is coloured. It is the repeated drops that produce the effect. And I came across this amazing true story from 1995. In Montgomery, Alabama, although 70% of the passengers using the city buses were black, the first rows on all buses were kept for whites. And if those seats were taken and more whites got on the bus, black people seated at the back of the bus were forced to get up and give them their seats. On December the 1st, 1955, Mrs Parks, a 42-year-old black woman, boarded a bus to go home after a long day working and shopping. She found a seat at the start of the black section. At the next stop, some whites got on, so the driver ordered her to get up and give her seat to a white man. She refused to get up. The driver called a policeman and Mrs Parks was arrested. Word spread quickly, a meeting was called, and Martin Luther King addressed it. They made one basic demand, that passengers be seated on a first-come, first-served basis. To achieve this end, they began a boycott, a boycott of the buses. People walked to work. It was an extraordinary scene. Everywhere, the sidewalks were crammed with people walking to work, and the buses went by empty, but for whites. The boycott dragged on all that winter and spring and summer of 1956. Meanwhile, the leaders of the movement were arrested. Martin Luther King's home was bombed. Finally, the Supreme Court declared that Alabama's segregation laws were unconstitutional. Victory was achieved and an unjust situation was put right because one day, one woman decided to act. The spark ignited by Mrs Parks started a fire. What a beautiful story. And I guess, how does that apply to us? We see these momentous occasions in life's history and we think, well, that's Mrs Parks' story and, and that's you know her race in America. But I want to say to you, you are as important to God as Mrs Parks and I'm quite sure you can start a fire where you live. I began this whole journey just wanting to touch that next person and just wanting to tell them what God has done for me. And that's all I have ever done. Yes, I've done a little research. I have produced some products, but essentially I just want people to be touched because I want them to experience what God has done for me. And so that little tiny fire that I can begin maybe is spreading in quite a few different places. You too, begin where you are. Let your guard down. Allow God to start a fire through you, a fire of love, a fire of righteousness, a fire of goodness, a fire of fighting injustice, a fire of, a fire, a fire of God. So may you be called into this amazing work of the kingdom of God because, yes, from small things, small beginnings, great things can come and you can be a part of it. And I want to say to you that God will make it happen if you say, here I am, use me to build your kingdom. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I look forward to meeting you again next week.